So as far as the singularity is concerned, um, maybe I should just do a two, three minute preview and tell you some of the things that are happening, right? So in the old world, we had to abide by, by things which were impossible, but by things which took governments billions of dollars and lots of time to, to accomplish. Nowadays, we live in a new world in which anything is literally possible. There is a doctor called Dr. Anthony Atala. Ten years ago, he, he bioprinted uh, a bladder and he uh, transplanted it uh, to a, which at the time was an adolescent boy, who is now a healthy adult from his own stem cells. Okay, and it's working perfectly normally. So the, the technologies that we're looking at are going to change the world, really. And we're looking at uh, things such as uh, genetics, robotics, nanotechnology, space, uh, communications, computer science, artificial intelligence. I told you I actually took a ride in the Google Robocart this summer. We went to the Lawrence Livermore National Ignition Facility where people are working on fusion now before they used to make nuclear bombs. Um, I decided not to fly the shuttle simulator because I had other things to do and meet better people and more interesting stuff rather than obsolete government technology. Um, so, all I want to tell you is uh, perhaps two or three things more. And that is, there are several simultaneous trends that are going to literally change the face of this planet and which can uh, bring extinction to our species or help us live forever. That would challenge the very meaning of what it means to be human. You would be able to eventually change, as I said, your sex, your race, your height, your eye color, your body composition, uh, your cognitive capacity. Even I interviewed recently one of the foremost uh, neuroscientists in the world. His name is Dr. Randall Kuna. He works on a project called Whole Brain Emulation. He said, mind uploading is not science fiction anymore. We don't have science fiction anymore, guys. What used to be science fiction right now is science in development, or science fact already, at least at the level of the lab. Things are happening that have never happened before, and the whole evolution, the meaning of us being human will change. And, people, and as I said, that's where the opportunity lies, that's where the power lies. That's where people in Silicon Valley want to make trillions of dollars and change the world. And if, you, if you're just idly looking and not jumping in, you're, you're running the risk of being left behind. So I, I'd invite you to get yourself educated and to join that, that, that uh, trend. So put simply, what is the, the technological singularity? Well, the technological singularity, for those who are not familiar with the term, has uh, several meanings. So first, in, in just in language, linguistically, singularity is usually something unique, which is singular. It doesn't have a second copy of it. In mathematics, it's a problem with undefined answer. Say, 5 divided by 0, something like that. In physics, it's a black hole. It's a place where the space fabric of time and space ruptures. It's a place where the laws of the universe, as we know them, don't hold true. In the technological sense, there's three ways you can look at it. And they're coming from some of the smartest people in the world. People like John von Neumann, uh, Edward Taylor, uh, IJ Group, people who created Unfortunately, incredible stuff like the hydrogen bomb and the first computers and and so on. So three senses uh, of, the, of the term. Uh, one sense is this uh, meaning of intelligence explosion, right? Intelligence develops to a point in which your toothbrush is smarter than you. Just think about our cell phones, how smart they have gotten in the last 10 years. Right now, you have in my cell phone here more computing capacity and more power than the President of the United States had at the peak of the Cold War. We're told that there are 30,000 nuclear missiles. Think of the power, right? So that's the intelligence explosion. And everything is going smart. Your shoes will be smart. Uh, your glasses will have goggles with like projected eventually contact lenses. Everything is going smart. Eventually, some people say well, we're going to get smart dust and the universe is going to be waking up. Right now we live in a dumb universe. So that, that perhaps one way of looking at it. Another way is the event horizon uh, phenomenon. The, 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 the black hole um, concept which tells us that 
we can see until a certain point in the future, and once the technological singularity occurs, we are absolutely unable to predict what happens next. Why? Because we stop being the smartest species on this planet. Machines will be smarter, they are already smarter in any ways that you can name than us right now, right? People said, well, uh, when Alan Turing predicted first that a machine would beat the human in chess, people say, oh, that's not possible, it's never going to happen. Gary Kasparov lost in 1996 to Deep Blue. They said, well, but chess is not really a measure of intelligence. Honestly, like chess is highly logical. It's, it's you know, strictly in their strict rules. It doesn't really mean anything. Language, that's what makes us unique. We're human, we talk, we communicate with language. Computers would never be able to, 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 to communicate better than us. Watson just defeated the world uh, <coughs> The record holder in Jeopardy winnings and Jennings, and he annihilated them both uh, in, in Jeopardy. Watson, which was created again by IBM, and actually I'm working on interviewing the guy who created Watson. His name is David Perucci. Um, and so pilots don't fly planes anymore, guys. They just take off and they land. Okay, everything else is autopilot. The drones that are bombing people in Pakistan. The new ones, they don't even take off. Everything is automated. The only thing that the, the operator does is he makes the decision to bomb or not to bomb. And eventually even that will be automated. I told you the Google car drives safer than what people would do on their own. Because we're emotional beings, we have all kinds of cognitive limitations. Eventually machines will beat us at everything that we do. And, and when, once that happens, we are unable to predict what's going to happen next. We stop being the smartest species on the planet, and that's why it's a black hole. Our ability to predict the future goes out the drain. And uh, the third way, which is associated usually with uh, Raymond Kurzweil, uh, is the accelerating change uh, hypothesis. Now, Ray Kurzweil is an amazing guy. I, I had the pleasure of meeting him twice. I'm working on interviewing him. He's like, Absolutely incredible guy, brilliant inventor, uh, made a difference in people's lives, especially he started developing object recognition software to help blind people be able to read because he was flying on an airplane next to a blind guy who was telling him the hardest thing for me in my life is reading text because I'm blind, right? So as I said, it's never about you guys, if you blog or you podcast or you invent stuff, it's about somebody else. So if you're blogging on, or podcasting, Think again, it's not about you, nobody cares about you, it's about your audience, your listeners. What their problems are, what their dreams are, what their fears are, what their opportunities are. And if you have an about page there, and you think that's about you too, you're wrong again. It's not about you, it's about them. It's about how you can help other people. And if you can do that, you know, the best way to achieve your dreams is to help other people achieve their dreams. And if you can do that, Doors will open magically for you. You'll be able to tweet just like last week. I wake up, I check my email. There's a forum, Future of Humanity 2041 45, happening in Moscow. All those incredible people are going. In three days, I'm like, how in the world did I not hear about this? I'm on a thousand mail lists. How did I miss this, right? So I'm like, okay, what can I do about it? I can tweet. I tweeted. The guy who paid my ticket to go to NASA is like, do you need my help again? Last time I spent my money well. Okay, one problem solved, ticket paid, right? I had the option, my wife is like, I can't <coughs> believe it. You just found out about this and you're able to find people to pay for you and send you there in like two days. Like, that's inspiring. I'm like, are you kidding me, hon? Like, I go away for 10 weeks to, to Singularity University and what do you do instead of finding somebody with hair, you start a second business you know, that's, that's, that's what's inspiring for me. But anything is possible. That's what I'm saying. And I don't have that many followers. I only have about 800, you know, and maybe four or 5,000 among the different networks, you know, LinkedIn and Facebook. But it's not the quantity, it's the quality. And it's what you provide for them. So as I said, it's not about you. It's about them. It's about the difference you can make in this world. And... If you go with the, with the um, there's so much technical stuff that I want to tell you and all the opportunities, but we're out of time. So if you want 
to take one thing from our conversation today is this. We live in an incredible world. Absolutely incredible. Things that are happening today have never ever existed before in the history of humanity. Change is happening faster, deeper, hundred year old companies and trusts and, and billionaires are collapsing overnight and people, uh, teenagers, come up with stuff that's worth billions of dollars and soon we're going to see the first trillion years. And they do that by changing the world. And they're not smarter than you. They're not smarter than you. I, I've met many of them. Some of them are very smart people, but it really, it comes down to focus and strategy, right? I've been very lucky, right? I was accepted at Singularity University on a waiting list for two months on a full scholarship in the very last moment. Why? Because somebody else didn't make it, right? So you'd say, Nick, you were lucky. Sure, I was damn lucky. Sure. But I was working for two years until I get to be lucky. And I was in the perfect position. So when my fortune smiled at me, I was there to grab it. So fortune favors the prepared. If you guys are ready and you fight for it, eventually you're going to get lucky. And you know, I'm not ashamed to admit that almost everything that I've accomplished with my blog is based on luck. But the funny thing is that the harder I work at it, and the more I try to help other people, the luckier I get. And doors are opening for me magically. And I'm able to do stuff that I never thought possible for anyone, let alone for me. Right? So I want to tell you, you can change anything you can put your mind to, and you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. But to do that, you have to first be committed to the result. You have to be committed, put yourself out on the line, risk everything, be willing to lose and fail. Be willing to lose and fail. I, I've had a few failures and I can talk all about that. I mean, as I said, my first websites were horrible. And right now, when I look at them, I'm like, I can change a million things, right? I don't have the money to do it, but it's infinitely better and it looks pretty, pretty okay if you look at it now. Why? Because I've been working at it one step at a time every day for the last two and a half, three years. So even the longest way, you know, starts with a single step. And if you start today, you're not wasting time. And 10 years from now, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed where you've gotten to. Thank you. I think we missed one thing uh, both back from Helen and Nicola, and I think it's evident to most of us in the room who've known you before or just probably just met you. Is it's focused strategy, but the bigger part of that is the passion and that thing that comes from within you that just drives you. Forward because you, you you changed your topic because you felt there was something to be said. And that, that feel, ability to shift because you're so passionate about these topics is what else makes you successful. And what makes anybody who wants to issue change in whatever topic they want to do is if you're a new chew toy. Thanks, guys. Thank you.